Um, yes, I, I think we, the, the vision document is, is excellent. I mean, why is the vision document so important to us? I mean, th there's, there's, two re there's two reasons. It's the sort of window that the rest of the world can see Susanna, because there are many people outside of the water and sanitation family who still have to be convinced about the importance of, uh, of water and sanitation and sustainable development. So this first entry point for Susanna, it's very important to get the messages right. And I think that's done in a very clear, uh, a very good way. So congratulations to Roland and Elizabeth on that. But there's two purposes, if we dig deeper into what the vision document is all about, that for me are the most important as we look to the forward, to the future. The first thing is that Susanna really serves the practitioners of water and sanitation, particularly sanitation and wastewater, uh, very well. Um, I, I, I watched a very interesting documentary the other day about the Industrial Revolution in England, and it compared the process in England as compared to France. And one of the reasons why the UK managed to move forward really well is they fostered small working groups of experts from different disciplines to come together to solve the problems. And that's in a way, if you like, exactly what Susanna is doing. It gets working groups which bring in people from different disciplines to look at particular issues and come up with answers. And that's where these ideas, these new ideas are born, and that's why the support that's coming in from the Gates Foundation is very, very important because it means that this, this embryonic process that, that, that can be looked after by Susanna can actually, actually has a place and a platform to go forward. The second issue is a regard to the monitoring, and we've heard it already. I'm somebody who's been intimately involved in the, the, the JEMI process, which is the addition to the JMP, which, are, um, which Switzerland and Germany are, are very much supporting. And we've been looking at developing the indicators, particularly for wastewater, but the other parts of the water goal. And one of the key challenges as we start to work with the countries is people in countries and governments are really panicking because they know there's a huge burden associated with this monitoring. And the costs of this monitoring, you know, it's just not possible. I mean, how can you, how can you divide money away from providing services to monitoring? It's not possible. So that's where Susanna comes in because what they can do is ensure that Susanna members and the outreach can help to formulate ways to do this monitoring at the local level, which can be aggregated for national estimates. And at the moment, you have a national statistical office who does work and brings all the information together from utilities. But Susanna partners can play a huge role in helping to develop those indicators. The reuse example is a very good idea. There's no figure attached to that. So Susanna can you know, really make a huge contribution to helping to define that and, and to help to understand this, I like to call it a monitoring or progressive <coughs> monitoring, understanding that all countries can't do everything from day one and they need to enter or jump on the monitoring train uh, in a way that isn't too burdensome. That's very important. Just, just uh, two final uh, quick comments on the humanitarian issue. We've got lots of statistics at Habitat about the growth of slums over the past, you know, ever many years, but perhaps the most frightening and startling thing is that though uh, in many countries the, the proportion of, of urban populations living in slums has stayed roughly about the same. Real numbers, it's gone up, but the proportion is the same. But the countries that are in conflict are the places where there's been a huge increase in the number of urban slum dwellers. So we're getting this situation now where we have to understand this linkage between humanitarian crises, urban uh, expansion or slum expansion, and the need for basic services. And that's another area where Susanna can really help through the vision document to help this linkage between uh, humanitarian and development work. And finally, I think the most important thing about the vision, which I find so satisfying, is that it talks really about a sanitary revolution rather than a sanitation revolution. And it's this understanding that you need to consider all aspects of sanitation if you're really going to do any justice. I remember many years ago seeing this marvelous picture, you know, for sanitation uh, with, you know, a doctor in a white coat vaccinating a child standing in knee deep in shit. And that's basically what the whole joke is. The whole system's geared towards, you know, that sort of medical treatment when they forget 
they're surrounded by an environment which is the main determinant of people's health. So I think, I won't say any more there now, but I think the vision document's excellent and it provides this amazing transmission for us to take the advantages that the SDGs are bringing and use them to our advantage. Thank you, Graham.